Hi, Julia Khan. My name is Will Kimmerer, and today I'd like to present to you the progress so far on my Julia Summer of Code project, Differentiable Graph Class. I'd like to first quickly thank both of my JSOC mentors, as well as Sweet Sparse author Tim Davis, for being so incredibly generous with their time, knowledge, and mentorship during this project. First, let's clear up what exactly is Graph Class. Graph Class is a C API specification for a BLAST like library which provides basic functions for sparse linear algebra. While sparse linear algebra routines are useful in any capacity, the graph class effort is really focused on enabling fast graph algorithms to be expressed in the language of sparse linear algebra. To that end, there's three core concepts, the duality between graphs and matrices, linear algebra operations, and operators, which I'll explain here in a moment. The graph matrix duality is a very well understood map between two of the most foundational data structures in computer science. At its most basic, this relationship is found in the adjacency matrix of a graph, and the real power comes from operations like matrix multiplication acting as graph traversals. Each numbered vertex on the graph is present on both axes of the matrix, and each element denotes the presence of an edge. Note that even with relatively small graphs like this one here, that there's a lot of empty space, and in a dense matrix, we would be storing an incredible amount of redundant information for any graph of significant size. That's where sparsity comes to our rescue. With a sparse representation, whether it's in coordinate form or where one or more of the axes is compressed, we make serious gains in both memory and computational efficiency. One important aspect of graph blast on the storage side of things is the opacity of graph blast data structures. The library author is free to cho choose um, a storage format as they wish and can take advantage of that to greatly increase performance. The sweet sparse implementation we're working with employs four different formats in both row and column orientation. And by exposing some degree of control over the format to users, we now have access to several new formats, including the sorely missed CSR format often requested in GitHub issues. Before we talk about the linear algebra operations themselves, we need to talk about what I mean by generalized operators. In GraphBlast, there is a distinction between operators and operations, and the difference should be clear in a moment. Take the basic matrix multiplication we all know and love. This operation consists of a series of scalar multiplications followed by a summation reduction along one of the dimensions. While matrix multiplication is obviously immensely useful in its current form, we can express many, many more algorithms by generating, generalizing the sum and multiply operators to arbitrary binary operators. In doing so, we move from the arithmetic semi-ring there at the top, which is briefly, a semi-ring is briefly a domain and two binary operators with some special properties, to an arbitrary semi-ring. With graph blasts, we can use virtually any domain D, virtually any operator in place of O times, and a appreciable but smaller number of operators, known as monoids, in place of O plus. With our new operators in hand and a set of operations, we have a powerful toolbox for graph algorithms. You'll find many of the useful operations defined on abstract arrays here, although they are equipped with some new arguments in almost every case. In addition to accepting operators, of the unary, binary, monoid, and semi-ring types, graph class operations support arguments for masking and accumulating into the output matrix. The mask, denoted by bold M in the math notation, determines what results of the calculation are written into the result matrix C. Masks allow us to effectively ignore large swaths of the iteration space and can massively increase performance whenever you need to operate on subsections of a matrix. The O dot is the accumulate operator, which allows us to accumulate the results of the computation into the output matrix C, should there already be results there. While the scalar operators are generalized, these functions are otherwise the same map, multiply, reduce that we know today. More extensive documentation on operators, operations, masks, et cetera, can be found in the sweet sparse graph class.jl repo or in the sweet sparse graph class user guide by Tim Davis. A significant number of graph algorithms are expressible via the linear algebra operations above in combination with semi-rings. Centrality measures, triangle counting, shortest paths, coloring, and message passing are among the many algorithms in the literature already expressed in this way. It's important to stress, however, that many of these semi-rings can also be used in non-graph context to great effect. 
After that brief overview of Graph Blast, let's talk a little bit about the actual package I'm working on. SweetSparse GraphBlast.jl wraps the reference Graph Blast implementation written by Tim Davis. SweetSparse Graph Blast is the only really complete implementation and now helps provide users with fast, multi threaded sparse operations. New sparse formats have been frequently requested by the community. And most importantly, generalized operations allow us to express many more algorithms in Julia linear algebra than were possible before. The code I'll show today is a little bit boring without any particular applications, just the basic usage of the package. But please check out the repository for a larger set of examples like PageRank. First is basic matrix and vector construction. We support construction by dense arrays, coordinate lists, by passing a sparse matrix CSC from the uh, standard library, or by normal get and set index. The last construction method is very bad practice for a normal sparse matrix CSC. However, sweet sparse graph class uses a lazy set index to avoid making costly insertions one by one. So it can be well over 300 times faster. Next, we have matrix vector multiplication using the built-in max plus semi-ring. A large number of semi-rings are built in, the tropical semi-rings, Boolean semi-rings, and these built-ins are fast. User-defined operators are well-supported, but experience significant slowdowns relative to those built-in operators. The full range of Julia indexing notation is also supported, with extensions for masking and accumulating. Currently, printing is done by graph class. Around the time this video releases for JuliaCon, there will also be an option to enable sparse arrays braille map style printing as well. Before discussing the benchmarks, note that there is an overhead to creating a GB matrix from a sparse matrix CSC. Graphplast native sparse RAND should help alleviate many of these cases, but just keep that in mind. Matrix multiplication either matches or outperforms base and sparse arrays on every matrix structure, sometimes being well over five times faster. While being much more general, it takes advantage of threading, unlike Julia's current sparse arrays standard library. The difference for indexing, subassign, and masked indexing is much more stark and exceeds 100x in the majority of cases, often exceeding uh, 1,000 times. Please check out a larger and newer library of benchmarks at the package repo. Version 0.4 released before the filming of this video. It includes complete coverage of the Graph Class C API, both as a Clang generated low level wrapper, as well as a more Julian interface. Lazy transpose works as expected and automatically sets the correct descriptors for each function. As mentioned earlier, user defined operators are well supported. Their performance is degraded relative to the built in operators, so should only be used whenever there is not a built in available. GB matrix construction is quite fast owing to the use of import and export functionality rather than building and consuming lists of tuples. <clears throat> Around JuliaCon, when this video is released, version 1.0 should be available. This release will include many new features and quality of life improvements, including chain rule support, which is a core part of my Julia Summer of Code project, which will support all of the operations and most of the uh, operators on um, the real numbers. User-defined data types will be available, such as new number types, arrays of arrays, et cetera. Complete and more ergonomic coverage of the interfaces like base, sparse arrays, and the array interface. And finally, better support for ISO-valued matrices, or matrices with a single value across all elements, um, saving storage space. In the near future, I'll be working on good integration with light graphs and plotting ecosystems, as well as the machine learning ecosystem, with support for any chain rules enabled AD like Yoda or Zygote, as well as Flux and Flux Geometric. Please take a look at the package, especially if you work with sparse arrays. It's part of the Julia Sparse organization, and I would greatly appreciate any comments, issues, or feature requests. Thank you.